Hi guys, it's Kate from The Fold Line and this week we're bringing you a new different sort of video about our sewing weekender that happened in Cambridge. Um, I don't know if any of you knew about it but we joined forces with Charlotte from English Girl at Home to organise a two day sewing event up in Cambridge which was amazing. So on the Saturday we all we had like a sort of informal sew along where everyone brought all their projects and were in one big room together and everyone just sewed all day long. We also had a fabric and pattern swatch which was fairly hilarious, everyone was scrabbling away to get the things they wanted. And then on the Saturday evening we all went out for um, dinner and drinks, some of us might have had a few too many drinks. And then on the Sunday we had talks all day which was really, really interesting. So we kicked off with Rachel from House of Pinero. Then we had Grace from Beyond Measure, we had Marilla Walker, um, then we had Eleanor from Randomly Happy, then we had Tilly from Tilly and the Buttons, and we finished with Gabby from Gabadashery. And the talks were amazing, they spanned everything from, you know, Tilly was talking about um, taking her patterns from the, the sort of process of like getting them to the market, Gabby was talking about vlogging, um, Marilla was talking about design inspiration and how she moves her kind of pattern design process forward. It was, yeah, really, really interesting. So in this video we've got sort of um, snippets from the weekend, um, little bits of all the talk so you can get a bit of a taster of what went on. Um, also at this point I feel like we should say a big thank you to our sponsors. So when we decided to organise this, we really wanted to keep the cost of the tickets down. And that was something that was really important to us because we wanted it to be sort of everyone to be able to come. So um, this, we got quite a bit of sponsorship which brought the ticket prices down. And you know, Genomi provided machines for everyone. We had amazing um, fabric companies sponsoring, sponsoring us and gave us amazing bits for goodie bags. Um, we had a couple of companies who sponsored um, people to actually go to the event which was really amazing. So we just really wanted to say a big thank you to all of them and we're going to link to all of them down in the show notes as well so that um, you can go and have a look and see what they gave and all of that sort of thing. So um, we just wanted to say a really big thank you to them because without them none of this probably would have been able to have happened. So thank you. Anyway, enough gabbling from me, I am going to let you sit back and enjoy. I am making, oh it's top secret, I'm not meant to show you. It's my vintage okay. sewer lover. You can show us the fabric, okay, let's, have a, let's have a beautiful little fabric. Isn't it gorgeous? That is gorgeous. to me to be talking to you about creativity because something really close to my heart I think we all need to use different ways of expanding our creativity in any different area even if you do uh, jobs that are not necessarily creative it's very important to use your creativity and it's really exciting for me to just come and talk and try to translate that into sewing which is one of my biggest passions so I'm just going to try to be brief we got about 10 minutes and I talk a lot I got a timer, <laughs> so, but I don't think um, I will be uh, paying attention to this because when I get into sewing, it's so exciting for me that I can't stop talking. So I know you guys probably feel the same about sewing. So one of the things that I want to talk about is how do we expand our creativity and how do we make ourselves use that in our sewing help? choosing patterns, to, uh, how we pick fabrics. And the first thing we need to do is expand our definitions of our current skills. One of the things that a lot of people say to me, oh, but I'm a beginner, or oh, I don't know if I can handle that pattern yet. And when you think about your current skills, like 
we all tend to underestimate ourselves. We don't believe we are good enough. And we are. But we have to believe ourselves first. So the first thing before you start thinking, oh, should I take this pattern, should I do this pattern, should I do this pattern that I already know, you have to think, how can I release the preconceived ideas of fabrics that I know or the patterns that I'm familiar with and go for something else? Because you're only gonna build skills by trying something new. And it doesn't need to be going from zero to hero, you know, going for something that you're really scared. It's adding little things, but you have to, first, you have to take that preconceived idea of in your mind that's like, how do I do that? And it's, it's called Beyond Measure, and it's an online site that sells, um, what I try and do is source really unusual and handmade tools for sewing mainly, but also other craft areas and looking also at areas such as embroidery, quilting. Um, my own kind of area of interest is dressmaking, um, but I'm really interested and what I've always done is work with other small businesses and makers and creative people. Um, so a bit about myself, um, my mum was, or still is a great maker, she's always done embroidery, beadwork, um, knitting, and I did come from a family where um, there was actually nine of us in the house and my mum and my grandma and my auntie were always kind of making things. So it's something that I was brought up with. And I did go to, um, to art college and I studied ceramics actually. Um, but I've always been interested in making in different materials. I've done silver work, uh, silver work and um, but I've, al I've always come back to sewing. Um, I went Career-wise, I went into working in exhibitions and as a gallery curator, and I still do that freelance as well at the moment. So I suppose um, what Beyond Measure does is it brings together my kind of experience of working with other people and makers and presenting a range of products that kind of ties in with my other interest as sewing. So what I really um, wanted to do, and I kind of had this, this moment where I realised that a lot of people that I work with were making objects that would be of interest to, to sewers and makers um, and I wanted to bring them together into a collection of really high quality unusual items that you really possibly couldn't get elsewhere um, and I once I'd had this idea I really couldn't stop thinking about it and it, I just knew that it was something that I had to do. And I've been sewing for a long time since I was about 12 um, and I grew up in Devon, um, making lots of really dodgy clothes as a teenager. Um, and after art school, I had sewing jobs up until I was 25 as like a factory machinist and a curtain maker, etc. And then I went on to study fashion and textile design, which is um, where I've learnt the pattern making. And I discussed with Anne yesterday how before I learnt how to make proper patterns, it was literally lying on a piece of paper, behind my body, <laughs> trying to make it fit my body. But it uh, didn't go too bad. <laughs> it was actually all right. <laughs> so yeah, I learnt how to do everything in a, in a more proper way. So now I'm a pattern designer. So I'm um, a full-time mum, essentially, um, and full-time designer when they're not around. Um, which is, I love it, it's really great and I get to play. So I thought I would kind of run you through how I get design ideas, how I get construction ideas and if you follow me on Instagram or my blogs you'll know I'm pretty obsessed with lingerie right now. <laughs> like ridiculously obsessed and I thought I'd show you this <laughs> because it's pretty crazy. Woo. Right, this isn't actually something I made to wear, <laughs> can I be clear? This was something I made at university because you get a, like a project brief of um, uh, what's your favourite designer garment, now go and copy it. <laughs> so this was mine, I, d I can't even explain like why I chose this. I think Effort and money and I've not got a wardrobe that I love so I was just buying back to buying ready to wear. And that's absolutely fine and I still have to supplement my wardrobe with ready to wear because sometimes, you know, these jeans for example, you cannot buy dark stretch denim to save your life, like you just, oh I can't find it. Um, but I really wanted to try and make as much as I possibly could with the time I had. Um, so I've been doing a lot of thinking about it and I've got like a three point plan. I love, you know, love 
plans and three points are my favorite so I thought I'd share just sort of like my three point plan with you guys for how I my process and hopefully maybe if you're interested in sort, sort of sewing your own clothes and you've got a wardrobe that has things that you love but you don't really wear them and you don't you want to love them more that maybe this can help I don't know feel free to like put in earphones or something if it's not for you and um, I won't be offended but um so I guess the first thing is really thinking about what works for you and there's this amazing fashion blogger uh, based in Texas I think called Unfancy have you guys heard of her or come across her she is amazing she's really really good she doesn't she's not a sewer but she's obsessed with like a capsule wardrobe and finding sustainable companies um, and she really cares about where her clothes comes from and she's really obsessed about a capsule wardrobe not filling your wardrobe with stuff um, but like finding a few set pieces that you love and work for you and can be combined um, and she, so it's unfancy she's great her Instagram account is, is really nice as well she's really tall and you know really pretty and just really gross um, so <laughs> don't look at it if it's like in the morning and you're feeling a bit you know not great um, but she's got a really good she's got this um, somewhere in her back catalogue she's got this really cool little worksheet and I do love I love a worksheet um, that takes you through sort of it's like a pie chart it's like what do you actually do like what do you spend your time doing do you go to the park a lot do you go out for cocktails a lot you know actually trying to work out what you do is like a really big step and then planning what you're going to make. What I'm going to share with you is the process that we go through at Tilly and the Buttons to make our sewing patterns so how do I come up with the initial concept, the idea for the garment design, and then turn that into the finished product that you might get in your hands? Um, so just to give me a sense of where you guys are at, how many of you know how to draft a sewing pattern? All right, quite a few of you, great. And for the rest of you, don't worry, I will try and explain that. Um, and how many of you actually sell your sewing patterns? I know Melissa's here, and I think Marilla's gone. So just, just one. Okay, fine. <laughs> is there, oh no, to Rachel. <laughs> and Rachel. And is anyone interested in doing that kind of thing in the future? Yeah, a few hands. Okay, cool. So I hope this will be interesting for you. So just to give you a little bit of background to me, um, I was, before I started doing all of this, I was sewing and pattern cutting in my spare time just for the love of it. And in my full-time job, I was working in training and audience development in the art sector. So my motivation in starting was very much from the point of view of wanting to encourage more people to engage in creativity, to learn new skills and to give them a joyful experience when they're making something with their own hands. So I just kept hearing the same story again and again of people saying, oh, I, you know, I wish I could do that, but I just don't really understand sewing patterns. I don't understand the jargon and the, you know, the diagrams they put me off. And they just felt a little bit intimidated by them. Did anyone feel that right at the beginning? Remember that sort of sense of like, what, what is this? <laughs> um, so I wanted to create resources that were both accessible but also inspiring, including to people who'd never used a sewing pattern before or never even seen one because at the time there were a lot of, it was sort of the beginning of this renaissance of younger people sort of wanting to get into making their own clothes. So um, the sewing patterns that we make, they all include a lovely colour booklet with step-by-step -step photos so you can see what it's going to look like on your sewing table as you're making it. They include lots of tips and tricks. Um, we translate all the jargon and sort of write everything in a very sort of upbeat, encouraging tone of voice so that people sort of get to the end and feel like they've, they've learnt something. It hasn't been a complete disaster, but you know, if not everything was perfect, no one's going to die. It's, it's going to be fine. Um, so I sold my first pattern in January 2013. I remember it well, seeing the first like sale email, Melissa's nodding, <laughs> do you remember that? I remember who bought it as well, it was funny, I was very excited. Anyway, it was a PDF only and I had a full-time job at the time, so I was doing literally everything myself. So from drafting the patterns through to building the website and dealing with all the customer emails that were coming in. So it was a lot of work um, and it was a massive, massive learning curve and it really has been 
a sort of constant process of evolution and it, it still is really I'm sure that the way we do things is going to change in the future. So is anyone here does anyone vlog already? Does anyone does everyone know what a vlog is? Okay good okay because a lot of people just go what actually what does that mean? But it just means video log and it's just a video basically. Um, but I know there is a vlogger. Lee where are you? Yes, don't you hide. Um, and is anyone thinking of moving on to YouTube? Yes, good. Okay, well, I'm talking to you two then. <laughs> I'm Megan, you're out there too. Uh, so, I have a few um, pointers on what you should maybe consider before you would set up a vlog. And they're just what I would think about. So, you can do this as just a, a throwaway thing. It doesn't have to be something serious. But if that is something that you're considering, maybe for a bit of a change in scenery, then these are some points that I have. So my first thing is how long do you want to put into it? Do you want this to be a hobby? Are you just someone who maybe has not a blog already and thinks that video would be a fun extension? Or is this something more serious that you're thinking, do you know what, I want to do a weekly video where I start a conversation with my audience and meet people around the world. Maybe you want to become a part of the vlogging community because we're growing and we're awesome. <laughs> um, or do you just yeah, want to do this as a little kind of byproduct to what you already do? Do you want to spend a lot of time editing? Um, do you want to spend a lot of time on adding other shots and interest? Or is this something where you just want to talk into your iPhone? and just show the pretty fabrics that we all love to talk about. Um, I guess the, the thing about that is uh, that I would personally say that everything should be fun. So um, if I'm ever getting to a point where I'm like, oh, you know what, I, this is a chore to me, then I will stop because it should always be enjoy enjoyable. And you're talking to an audience about you know, being enthusiastic and passionate, and if you're not feeling that, then it's not going to carry across. So I think that's kind of my number one thing, that you've got to show how much you're loving it. And if you're not feeling it, then, then maybe it's not the right thing for you or the right time to be doing it. So if you like the look of what you saw and you're interested in next year's one, um, we're going to put a link down below so you, you can sign up to the newsletter and we will keep you know, if you're on the newsletter, you'll be the first to hear about the new date once we've got it all sort of nailed down and sorted, so make sure you do that. Also, I should probably tell you what I'm wearing. I Today I have got um, the Sew Over It Poppy Play Suit on, and I'm not sure if you can see, but I actually, the elastic came out of this. So it is basically like wearing a sort of pyjama jumpsuit, which in the hot weather that we're having in London at the moment is just dreamy. So I don't know if anyone's made one yet, but I'd love to hear if anyone else has sort of done it and enjoyed making it. I really like it, and I think actually I'm probably not going to put the elastic back in, I'm just going to leave it like a pyjama. <laughs> anyway, back to the point, sorry. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoy our videos, why not subscribe to our little channel that's sort of growing each week. And um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Bye!